Welcome to MEB. This is episode 7, Archimedes Principle. Have you ever looked at a huge boat like this one and wondered how in the world does this thing stay afloat in the water? If so, stay tuned for the rest of this video because you're about to find out. Objects that are submerged, only if even partially submerged, have a buoyant force exerted upon them. This buoyant force always acts upwards, meaning opposite of gravity. The reason why has to do with the hydrostatic pressure, which we explained in the last episode. Since the pressure increases with depth into the fluid, the bottom of a submerged object will be in an area of higher pressure when compared to the top of the object. Archimedes' principle, named for the ancient Greek mathematician who made the discovery, states that the magnitude of this buoyant force is equal to the weight of the fluid displaced. Simple, but incredibly profound. From physics, we know that the weight of anything is the mass times the acceleration due to gravity. Therefore, the weight of the fluid displaced is the mass of the fluid displaced times g. But what about the mass of fluid displaced? Now we can apply some chemical engineering knowledge. Remember back in episode 5 of this series? We can express the mass displaced as the density times the volume displaced. But now it seems like we're just kicking the can down the road because we keep expressing the variable we don't know in terms of another variable that we don't know. What is the volume of the fluid displaced? Enter Archimedes again to save the day. Legend has it that Archimedes was getting into the bathtub when he observed that the water level rose when he got into the water. Further realizing that the volume of the displaced fluid is equal to the volume of the submerged object, he reportedly got so excited that he jumped out of the tub and ran naked through the streets of Syracuse, yelling Eureka. Who said that science wasn't exciting? Okay, we finally have something tractable. The buoyant force acting on a submerged or partially submerged object is the density of the fluid times the volume of the object beneath the surface of the fluid times g. And now we can perform a force balance. Remember that we always have gravity exerting a downward force. If the object is holding constant at a certain depth, we can set the gravitational force, or weight, equal to the buoyant force. Notice that there's a g on both sides, which can cancel out of the equation. The result is that the mass of the object equals the density of the fluid times the volume of the submerged object. Remember that any time you derive an equation like this, it's worth it to do a quick dimension check. If it makes sense, we can also express the mass of the object as density of the object times the volume of the entire object. Notice that I like to keep subscripts on my variables to stay organized. And there we have it. We can now use this equation to solve for one of the unknown variables. I want to caution you, however, and say that you should never just simply memorize this equation and apply it blindly. Instead, always start from the beginning and do the derivation yourself. For one thing, it's good practice to get into to go through the thought process on your own. For another, all situations are different, and deriving the equation yourself will keep you from applying the wrong equation for the situation. Another interesting thing that you might not have ever thought about is that we are under a buoyant force constantly. This is because air is also a fluid, and technically we are all submerged in the atmosphere. It's just that the density of air is so low that the buoyant force is barely noticeable. If, however, a submerged object is less dense than air, like a helium balloon, the buoyant force becomes apparent. Let's try a quick example. Let's say we throw a 16-pound bowling ball into the water, and for some reason we are interested to know how much it would weigh underwater. Let's start, as I recommended, at the beginning by drawing a free body diagram. Even though I haven't thrown a bowling ball into a pool lately, by common sense, I know that a bowling ball sinks. Therefore, the force of gravity is greater than the buoyant force, not equal to. The difference is what we mean by the effective weight. So, the equation we've derived is effective weight equals force of gravity minus buoyant force. Plugging in some expressions, force of gravity is the mass of the bowling ball times g. The buoyant force is the weight of fluid displaced, which is the density of water, times the volume of the entire ball, since the entire thing is submerged, times g. Now I have to plug in numbers. The only information we are given is 16 pounds, which is in the dreaded U.S. customary system. So we have two options. Either continue working in this system, or convert to SI, do the calculation, and convert back. Again, as engineers, I think you should be comfortable in either unit system. So let's stay in U.S. customary as much as I hate it. Remember in this unit system the goofiness between pound force and pound mass. So when I multiply by g, I have to divide by the conversion factor of pound mass feet per second squared to pound force. 
Effectively, this means that the force of gravity on the ball is simply 16 pound force. Next, the density of water is 62.4 pounds per cubic foot. I have to do some internet research about the dimensions of a bowling ball. I found that the standard diameter of the bowling ball is 8.5 inches, which seems about right. Given that the volume of a sphere is 4 thirds pi r cubed, I need to divide by 12 to get inches into feet, and then divide by 2 to get diameter into radius. The result is that I get 0.354 feet. Note that I'm neglecting the finger holes on the ball, but I'll leave it to you to ponder the effect of assuming that the volume of these holes is negligible. Finally, I perform the calculation and obtain an answer of 4.4 pounds. This makes perfect sense, if I imagine what a bowling ball might feel like underwater. Episode 7 Learning Objectives Now that this episode is over, you should be able to 1. Derive equations based on force balances for submerged objects and 2. Use Archimedes' principle to express buoyant force in terms of other known variables. That will conclude this episode. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.